Thanks, guys. A few weeks ago, college basketball fans across the nation were shocked when Louisville men's basketball player Kevin Ware gruesomely broke his leg in an NCAA tournament game against Duke. Ware's injury forced him to the sideline as the Cardinals went on to take the title, but he is expected to take the court by next year. Ware's broken bone, just like ACL tears or sprained joints, are physical injuries that most athletes can expect to just bounce back from. But what do you do when you have a concussion? Concussions have no expected recovery period, no quick fix surgery, and no tangible rehab. For athletes at Yale, with concussions, this dilemma hits close to home. Meet Brianna Segerson. Hailing from Akron, Ohio, Brianna, or Bo, as her teammates call her, played in 25 games for the Yale women's basketball team during her freshman year and entered the summer hungry to prepare for her sophomore year. But a bad car accident prevented this from happening. I did get rear-ended by a semi-truck and um, had really bad whiplash. I didn't hit my head on anything besides the back of the seat, um, but my head did go back and forth quite a few times. I remember running on the track. Um, I ran one lap and I got like the worst headache. I've, I thought I was going to pass out, but of course kept going. Um, I was on the second lap and I had to lay down on the track. Um, because I was just in so much pain. My head was pounding and I, I just was so exhausted. Although Brianna Searson did not get her concussion on the basketball court, its symptomatic effects directly transformed her athletic and later her academic career. Not only was Brianna suggested by trainers and doctors to end her collegiate play in order to preserve her mental health, she was also forced to take off three semesters of school for the burden of school and concussion became too heavy to bear together. Christopher Coyne, a former member of the Yale football team, can relate. After receiving his sixth concussion of his athletic career, he was also advised not to play anymore. Unfortunately, his sixth concussion came during his first week of collegiate practice. It didn't feel so bad at the time. It did not seem as severe as some of the other concussions I had had. Uh, but after practice, um, I started getting nauseous, uh, throwing up, um, having headaches, being very sensitive to the light and decided that would be better to report it and treat it early on so that I can get back to playing uh, sooner rather than later. Uh, once the trainer told me that I, she would not clear me to play anymore, uh, it was quite a transition. Um, having had a team to support me uh, all throughout high school and having that been my expectation when I got to college, it was bizarre being thrust into a completely different social uh, climate. So I was starting about a month, six weeks after everybody else was uh, freshman year, trying to make friends and whatnot. Um, and it was it was difficult. It was a process. Both Brianna and Chris have had time to reconcile the idea of not playing their beloved sports ever again in college. But both admit that the period directly after receiving the concussion carried the most emotional and physical distraught for them. Nicholas Weberg, also known as Nico, is currently in the midst of that period. A regular forward on the Yale men's hockey team, Nico suffered his second concussion of his career at the end of the regular season, and like Kevin Ware, had to sit on the sidelines as his team dominated postseason play. Probably the worst symptom of all of it, or the worst thing with the concussion, was like not being able to play. Obviously, sitting there watching, watching us win a national championship, because otherwise I would have been out there. But um, I mean, I couldn't be happy for the team and stuff like that. And that they know I've been part of it. I've been to every practice since. I've been to every meeting. And uh, I think my team has been great. All three student athletes expressed their frustration with the quote unquote treatment for concussions. In their words, it was essentially to do nothing. Not being able to do what you love, not being able to play basketball, not being able to play sports, not being able to hang out with friends or do school or watch TV. Just sitting in a dark room, no screens, no practice, no meetings, um, really doing absolutely nothing. They kind of just laid in a, a dark room slept a lot. I would, uh, I started watching Glee, where I would listen to it, because like, I could hear the music and kind of like the song, so I would do that. Head athletic trainer Chris Pacora reaffirms these recommendations. Not just the activity return, but the cognitive return. Um, we're now treating athletes, um, not only their physical activity, but their cognitive activity, the, the studying, um, computer work. Um, you know, like, now we eliminate uh, we eliminate lots of iPhone use and, and video game use. Uh, anything you're, where you're watching a screen can, be, can put a stress on your brain after a concussion that brings on symptoms, uh, along with reading, studying, um, 
not getting enough sleep. Protocol taken when an athlete incurs a concussion was derived at the third international conference on concussion in sports in November 2008 in Zurich, Switzerland. The consensus formed by a panel of physicians, neurologists, and medical officers from around the world defines a sports concussion, details the proper way to evaluate one, and lists the graduated return to play protocol, a protocol that has posed problems for coaches and players alike. It, it can be frustrating sometimes from a coaching standpoint because even, even from a player standpoint, we have players that had concussions, they're ready to come back, they feel like they're ready to come back, they want to come back, but they can't. And, and we as coaches, of course, want them back because we want them to participate and play and help our team, but they still have to pass these extra tests. So it just seems like there's, in, there's instances where the players are ready and it's safe for them to come back, but they still have to go through the protocol in order to get back. If you had asked me in high school um, if you should play through a concussion, I would have said yes. I did it many times in football, and uh, I didn't feel like there would be any long-term impacts on my health. And we never really saw someone firsthand experience those symptoms. I mean, the trainer told us, oh, you know, you can get uh, long-term headaches and memory issues and concentration issues. But I saw my teammates play with concussions and that never happened. I played through them and that never happened. And it really took a uh, personal experience of me actually experiencing those long-term symptoms before I kind of broke out of that culture of ignorance. I called our trainer and I called coach and I called um, everyone and I said, listen, I just got in this like minor car accident, I'll be back. You know, I feel like I could just practice, or I feel like I could keep training right now, like I'm feeling okay. And they're like, no, no, you need to take two weeks off. Whatever, so I took two weeks off, really upset that I was going to miss those two weeks of training, um, which is just silly to think about now after three years. Regardless of the differing opinions on the consensus protocol, everyone is in agreement with one thing. Yale was extremely supportive. Uh, the Office of Disabilities uh, was very helpful in giving me extra time. They're great. They're, yeah. Um, I mean, my dean, Dean G. Ellen Berkeley, she's amazing. She is literally like the best with this stuff. She makes sure that whatever I do, it's what I want to do. Thank God I have an amazing team, an amazing coach that was so, so, so supportive of me. Um, so I still got the team aspect, which is really, really helpful. For those guys that we've had that have had concussions already, um, and we want to avoid future concussions, so we're trying to be proactive about it. We got them these uh, head, this headgear, which is, um, you know, it's a martial arts uh, headgear. You'll see them, you know, in the uh, Ultimate Fighting Championships. The academic community at Yale has, um, has worked re really well with the medical community in um, buying into the whole protocol, buying into not just the activity return, but the cognitive return. Although considered the invisible injury, the attention that concussions have gotten in the medical and athletic sphere is very visible, including the gravity of its effects on student athletes nationwide. This proves its necessity to be taken just as seriously, or even more so, than a broken bone.